Boutique.com. And today, I am so excited because today is part one in our brand new video series where I teach you not only how to open a clothing store online, but how to open a successful clothing store online. Now since today is just part one in our video series, with many, many more videos to come, I'm going to teach you all of the steps, all of the details, everything you need to know to open your online store. Because let's be honest, it takes a lot more than 10 steps to open a business. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the topics we're covering today. First and foremost, we are going to start off with what problem you solve for your customers. And then from there, we'll take a look at factors to consider when naming your online clothing store. And then lastly for today, we are going to make sure that you begin the process to create all of your accounts for your social media for your business and secure your name, your username. And then next, I wanna show you a quick preview of what we'll be covering in our next lesson. So we will be putting out one video per week in this video series. So with that being said, make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe and also turn on your notifications because I do not want you to miss out on any of this great content and I am sure that you don't either. So let's get to it. for your customers. Now when you think about selling products online, you're not just selling a product. You're trying to solve a problem that your customers have. So let's think about how to consider this because I personally think that this is probably the most important step when it comes to opening an online business. So every, cus every human being needs a couple of different things. They have basic needs. They need food, shelter, water, and clothing. So by selling clothes online, you're already, you've already started the process of solving one problem for your customers. But we have to dig deeper than that. So think about what is so special about your products. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I sell cute clothes for women, I hate to break it to you, but there's a lot of competition out there and there's a lot of already established brands who are already doing that. So you have to dig deeper. So let's think um, about a couple of different examples. So let's say you sell raincoats. Okay, um, raincoats, a lot of people need those and not every store sells them, but you can probably find one from the North Face, from Patagonia, you can probably even find one from Walmart. So we need to dig a little bit deeper than that. Think about your target audience. So let's say that you're selling to college students, college girls, okay? So they're walking to class and they wanna stay dry. Okay, so this is getting closer. And they also wanna look stylish. They want to impress their peers. So you're selling raincoats to college girls where they can stay dry walking to class and feel confident and feel fashionable. So that's a problem that you'd be solving for your customers. And that's the way I want you guys to start thinking about this. Um, let's think about another example. So say that you sell clothing for babies that is free of any harmful or toxic chemicals. In that case, you're going to be solving a problem for mothers who care about that kind of thing and they feel like their babies deserve the best. So you'd be solving a problem for the target audience of mothers with young babies who care about that kind of thing. Something along the same lines would be maybe you sell products that are made from recycled materials to support the environment, to be sustainable. So you have to think about your target audience, who you're going to be selling to, and then what problems they're facing and how you can fix those problems. So another example would be, let's say you're selling to stay-at-home moms who want to feel confident from the carpool lane to date night out. Now you have to think about their fears and their anxieties and you have to connect with them through your products, through your social media posts, through your engagement online. You have to find a way to truly connect with your audience and solve their problem. Example from a company that 
launched recently. So I'm sure by now you've all heard about Rare Beauty, which is Selena Gomez's brand new makeup line. Now I'll admit, when I first heard about the launch of her new makeup line, I thought to myself, oh man, another celebrity is just putting her name on a brand and making the competition that much harder for us little people who have big dreams of making our own big brands who aren't celebrities. And I just, I had no desire to really look more into the company or check out her website or the products or anything like that. But then something happened. I kept seeing the same video pop up on my suggested YouTube videos where Selena Gomez was collaborating with Nikki from Nikki Tutorials. And after the third time I saw this video pop up, I was like, okay, okay, I'll check it out. So I started watching it and I'll be honest, I'm not one of those people who really eats, sleeps and breathes makeup. I mean, I definitely went through a phase in college where I had maybe two to three of my favorite beauty bloggers who I would frequently watch. But once I graduated and got busy with life and everything, I no longer really spend time watching makeup tutorials, anything like that. Probably could use some more guidance to improve my technique, but that's another story. Um, but something about this video really drew me in. I've always thought that Selena Gomez is a very genuine person. And after hearing her message, I... Honestly, I was kind of into it. Let me actually read it to you, to you guys. So, what Selena Gomez was interviewed saying is, she says that being rare is about being comfortable in yourself. I've stopped trying to be perfect, she explains. I just want to be me. I think rare beauty can be more than a beauty brand, she adds. I want us all to stop comparing ourselves to each other and to just start embracing our own uniqueness. You're not defined by a photo, a like, or a comment. Rare beauty isn't about how other people see you. It's about how you see yourself. And then I took a look at what the mission is for the company. And it says, our mission is to shape conversations around beauty, self-acceptance, and mental health. We want to help people get more access to support and services and help people feel more authentically connected to one another and less alone in the world. Now that is a powerful brand message. Whew. Now I don't, I don't mean for you guys to think that you have to be a celebrity to come up with a powerful message. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I just wanted to show an example of someone that we would all be familiar with. But rather, what I want you guys to start realizing and start getting in the mindset of is that you can actually develop your own powerful brand message that will draw in your customers, allow you to connect with your customers, allow your customers to connect with your brand. And that's important. That's the whole point. So once again, you don't have to come up with this amazing, powerful brand message today, but rather, I just want you guys to start brainstorming and start thinking to yourself. How can you go about putting your customer on a pedestal? start thinking and when we get closer to your launch you can come back to this idea after you've done some thinking today and really try to finalize this uh, there's no reason that you need to make this final decision today but rather it's time to start thinking about how to put your customers first and how your brand will benefit your customers <music>to realize that when you're going through this process you have to put your customers first you can't put yourself first so if you're going into this with the intention that you're opening an online store for the sole purpose to make a lot of money and to or to um, become famous or get a lot of recognition it's just it's not gonna work out none of that's gonna take place you have to put your customers first. You have to put your customers on a pedestal. You can't put yourself on the pedestal in this scenario. You can't open your store with the intention and the goal 
of only benefiting yourself by making money and gaining some fame, etc. You have got to, if you want to be successful, you have to start thinking about what you can do to help your customers. Because you have the potential to impact the lives of thousands, maybe even millions. And that's, that's why I'm here today to convince you to embark on this journey because you have the ability to change the lives of so many people who probably need your support and your help with whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. So, I didn't mean to get so deep in less than one, but like I said, I just want you to get in this mindset of thinking about putting your customers first and not yourself. So, that kind of lets me segue into our next topic, which is how to choose a name for your online clothing store. So there are a couple of things to consider when naming your online store. And if you're feeling stuck, I recommend thinking back to why you want to open your store to begin with. Why do you want to take this leap to open a business? You also want to consider your vision. So what are your goals for your store? How, what do you envision it looks like down the line? What is your theme? So do you want to open a lifestyle clothing brand where you sell clothing that you can wear in everyday regular life? Or do you want to focus on something more like workout clothes or athleisure or plus size apparel? Consider all of those elements, those styles, what your style is going to be when you think about your name. You can also think about who you admire most or something you're passionate about and see if you want to add that into the name. Let's say you're well known for loving ladybugs. You could consider naming your store the Lifestyle Ladybug Clothing Boutique. I don't know. Find something that you're passionate about. You can also consider incorporating something that will be symbolic to you into the name. You want something that your customers will understand and connect to, but you want it to be meaningful to you. So let's say you're opening your store with your sister and you want to name it your initials, the BB and P boutique. Sounds cute. Just find something that you love and see if you can incorporate why you're starting your business and what problem you solve for your customers into the name. Whether it's through something symbolic or you just have a way to connect that meaning with your name. I think that would be pretty awesome. But ultimately it's up to you. But there are a couple of things that I want you to consider when choosing a name. So first and foremost, I want you to make sure it's unique. Um, if you love the name Lulu's and you want to name your clothing store lulu's.com, unfortunately, that's already taken by a very well-known brand. So you're going to have to come up with something more unique. So when you're thinking about your name, just double check on social media and um, through your browser, see if the domain's available. We'll talk about no domains in the next lesson, but just make sure your name's unique and it's available and it's not something that's going to confuse your customers because there's already a well-known brand with the same or a similar name. Next, you want to make sure that it's not too hard to pronounce um, and it's easily understood. So if you're using, let's say you're using a word from another language, I think that's great. You just want to make sure that your customers can pronounce it properly and they can remember it and um, that it's not like a tongue twister or anything. So maybe if it is a word that they're not familiar with and there might be some confusion about how to pronounce it, you can make it clear um, on your website exactly how you pronounce it with phonetics or whatever. Um, and then also, you wanna make sure that it's something you're proud of, something that you will want to share with everyone you meet and it's, you don't want it to be something that you're gonna regret later. So if you've been in business for two years and you decide you hate your name and you wanna change it, it's gonna be a big hassle legally. So I don't recommend that. I recommend taking some time to really think about what you wanna name your store and then 
This leads me into our next topic, which is setting up your social media accounts. So, for today, I, you know, I'm not going to try to sit here and convince you to get onto social media because I think it's so obvious that in today's day and age, you have got to be on social media when you're a business to promote your products online. It's just part of business these days. It's part of your digital marketing strategy. So I will list um, the social media accounts that I think you should sign up for. Whether you're on your way to becoming an influencer or you don't know what a TikTok is and how it can be beneficial for your business, doesn't matter. You need to sign up for the following accounts. I will list the ones that I consider more optional, but honestly, just go ahead and secure the name, your username and all these accounts. If, there's av if it's available now, go ahead and secure it because you never know if someone who's 12 years old is gonna come in and take that name like next week. So go ahead and sign up today. Also, go ahead and if you have come up with your name, go ahead and comment the name of your store in the comments below and check out to see what else everyone else is naming their stores. Um, I think it's so fun to see what people come up with, and I'd love to check out what you've come up with. So go ahead and comment below. So today we covered the first few steps you need to take to open your online store, the things you need to start thinking about, and the things you need to do. In our next lesson, we will cover how to set up your store's budget, and we'll also talk about registering for your domain. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit subscribe and also turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any important lessons and you will be well on your way to starting your own successful online store. Now, if you're already ahead of where we are in this lesson plan, you're already on your way to opening an online store and you're looking for clothing vendors, wholesalers, go ahead and check out letsbuildaboutique.com because we have a free downloadable of some great wholesale vendors that can help you get started, start looking at products, and start sourcing your products online. Thanks so much for joining me today, and we'll see you on our next lesson.